tutorial starts with a song, but it's only a few seconds long. Let's get started with animation. Hello folks, what you see here is Arnold rendering a scene, and I'll show you the scene later. I just want to point you to the denoiser which I'm using here. It, um, Arnold renders the whole frame, it's frame 156 currently, out of 20, uh, 200, and at the very end, we're approaching the end, the denoiser takes over and renders the rest uh, and sm smooths certain parts of the image. It's not really crucial for this animation, but I'm just playing with these so-called images. And I did a tutorial about the images in Arnold just a while ago. What we have in this scene is uh, dealing with several topics in Maya. And the beauty of 3D computer animation is that we can rely on so many tools. In this case, I start with a type mesh, then I retopologize it, then I reduce the polygons, then I convert it to a mesh network. In the mesh network, I introduce two circles, NURB circle curves, basically, and I introduce two point lights, and I use the motion path in order to attach the point lights to those curves. And finally, I go step on to a rendering with a turntable camera. This is the animation which I'll show you now. And uh, the rendering here is it takes longer than the turntable animation because we're closer to the object and we have a very special camera in this case. But let's start from the very beginning. The camera for this rendering is your task. You need to find ways to animate that camera. It's quite nice actually. We start with the type mesh, that is the T under polygon modeling, and we change the uh, word 3D type into an 8. Under geometry, you find the deformable type, and this gives us polygons at the front and at the back. Now we go to modeling, and under modeling, we have retopologize. It takes a second, and we get a very nice 8, which is still bit too complex for our purpose, that's why we redu reduce the amount of polygons by 50%. If we do this again, the 8 will be not recognizable anymore. You don't need to scale it down, but I like to do it because I like to keep in the dimensions and I delete the history. That means the 8 forgets that it was a type, it's just a simple polygon. Of course we need a shader now and I think today I go for a less glossy orange color. Well, now it's time for FX and for the mesh network. And the mesh network has in the default settings a mesh and I set it to circular. You don't see it at first because the eights are gathered all around it. The original is hidden and when you unhide it and rotate it by 90 degrees, that's with snapping, pressing the key, pressing and holding actually the key J. And uh, now you can hide it again. It's not needed anymore for this purpose and go back to the mesh network and under the mesh distribute node, you can now add many more instances as they are called. I think 110 is good for this purpose. Could be even more. Now we need to inspect it a little bit. The 8 is just perfect because it leaves two holes. 
and we can put circles inside. That's why we go to the curves and surfaces and to the orthogonal, to the front window. And we don't see the circle there. We change it from the up Y direction into the Z direction. And when we have a look, it is positioned slightly outside of our 8 wheel. That's why we move it inside and let's check it if it's really running through the lower part of the 8s. And it certainly is. Now we can duplicate it. Control D. And scale the Second one, it's called NURB Circle 2, slightly up. So it runs through the upper part of the 8. So NURB Circle 1 is a smaller one. And now we want to add lights to these circles. How do we do this? Well, we go to Create. And under Create, we find the lights and I choose Point Light. That's a light which shines all over the place. I select the nerve circle 1 and the light. The selection order is important. Go to animation, find the motion path and with the option box you see it is creating an animation along the time slider and when we stretch it to 200 frames it will be an animation when we apply it of 200 frames. You see that the light takes exactly 200 frames to move along that circle. We need a new light now. Actually, let's render it and have a look at the brightness of the light. And I think this serves our purpose. It's very nice up there. Second light, create lights, point light. And this time we select the Nerps curve, the circle 2, and then the light. And we have a light which runs through the upper circle, the larger circle. Now let's hide the mesh, repro mesh, that is our 8 wheel, and have a look at the animation of the two lights along the two circles. They do a marvelous job. They just start there and end there. And as you can see, they slow down when they reach their goal and they start slowly. That's something we don't want. That's why we select the first light and the motion path tab. And we select the motion path tab, go to Windows and under the animation editors, you find the graph editor. Now you see that graph, it's a fade in, fade out. And here you can make the tangents linear. That means the animation starts right away. And when the inner light reaches the end, it will not slow down, it will just continue. We do the same thing with the outer light. We select the motion path number two, go back to the animation editors, the graph editor, select that curve and flatten the tangents. Very nice. Now what we want to do is we want the two lights to behave slightly different. So we go back to the graph editor and we set the first point from zero to one. We lower this to zero, it just goes reverse and that's what we wanted. Well, here are a couple of renderings of this really simple animation which involves quite a few steps in Maya. Oh, and as I said, this camera, think about it how you would animate it. Bye bye.